Welcome to Physics Next Book. In this video, we shall discuss light cone coordinates, what they are, why do we call them that, and most importantly, why do we need them. Something tells me that this time we should start by answering the second question first. The light cone coordinates come in handy in certain advanced areas of physics. For example, in string theory, when we quantize a closed string, the calculation simplifies significantly if we trade in the standard Cartesian spacetime coordinates for the light cone coordinates. Also, when dealing with the dynamics of a relativistic particle, for example in relativistic collision scenarios, and also in certain versions of general relativity. Of course, we are not diving into string theory or general relativity right now, so not to panic. But even within the context of elementary special relativity, we can and we should learn a thing or two about these light cone coordinates since special relativity is where the idea of light cone coordinates originate from. Moreover, if we write the Lorentz transformation equations in terms of light cone coordinates, it tells us something interesting. So let's see what the light cone coordinates are. The light cone coordinates, usually denoted by x plus and x minus, are two linearly independent combinations of the time coordinate ct and one of the three space coordinates in the Cartesian form that is one among x, y and z. If the observed motion is along the x direction as is the convention we mostly use, the two light cone coordinates will be made of ct and x. So the space-time coordinates ct, x, y, z of an event p will be traded in for x minus x plus y and z, the corresponding light cone coordinates. The two special coordinates y and z just go along for the ride. Alright, but what is this linearly independent business? Simply put, x minus and x plus are independent variables just like ct and x are independent variables. If you are thinking of velocity being dx dt, so x must be a function of time, so x is not independent etc. No, that is only true for events on the trajectory of a particle. In general, for any given event in space-time, all its space coordinates and time coordinate are mutually independent in the sense that one cannot be written in terms of the others. As an easy analogy, think of points on a circle. For them, x can be written in terms of y or vice versa, but the same is not true for points that are not on the circle. Anyway, coming back to the light cone coordinates, why do we call them that? In a space-time diagram, consider the forward light cone drawn at the origin. Its two arms indicate the space-time trajectories or whirl lines of photons emitted at the origin, one moving in the positive x direction and the other in the negative x direction. Since a photon takes a time interval t to travel a distance ct from the origin event, at every event point on the photon world line, for its motion along the positive x direction, x is equal to ct. In other words, we may say this world line is characterized by the equation ct minus x equals 0 or x minus equals 0. Similarly, the other arm of the light cone for photon moving in the negative x direction will correspond to the equation ct equals minus x or ct plus x equals 0 or x plus equals 0 in other words. Now think of all the events on the time axis or ct axis. They are all located at the spatial origin so the equation x equals 0 represents the time axis. On the other hand, all events on the x axis occurred simultaneously when we started our clock at t equals 0. So the equation ct equals 0 represents the x-axis. Basically, x equals 0 is the equation for the time axis and ct equals 0 is that for the space axis. Exactly in the same manner, x minus equals 0 line represents the x plus axis and x plus equals 0 line represents the x minus axis. So in the x minus x plus yz coordinate system, the x minus and x plus are coordinate variables which vary along the two arms of the light cone and hence the name light cone coordinates. Okay, so why should we care about these light cone coordinates? 
Apart from their utility in some advanced areas like strings and all, the simplest advantage can be demonstrated by writing the Lorentz transformation equations between two inertial frames. Let's say the unprimed and primed frame in terms of the corresponding light cone coordinates. You are probably familiar with the Lorentz transformation equations between the standard space-time coordinates of the two frames. But just for the sake of completeness, beta 0 is the relative speed along the x direction between the two inertial frames in units of light speed that is v0 upon c and gamma given by 1 upon square root of 1 minus beta 0 squared is the Lorentz factor which acts as a scaling between the coordinates of the two frames. We have detailed videos on the significance of the Lorentz factor and how to obtain the Lorentz transformation equations right from the postulates of special relativity, so let's leave it at that. We can safely ignore the y and z coordinates since nothing much is happening with them and focus totally on the xt sector. To get the Lorentz transformation equations among the primed and unprimed light cone coordinates, just subtract the equation for x from the one for ct. The left hand side is just ct prime minus x prime, so x minus prime itself. On the right hand side, collect the ct minus x combination and factor it out along with the common constant Lorentz factor. That leaves us with 1 plus beta 0 inside. Replace the ct minus x with x minus. Now the factor gamma times 1 plus beta 0 can be simplified easily since gamma is again 1 upon square root of 1 minus beta 0 squared which can be factored into 1 plus beta 0 and 1 minus beta 0 under the square root. So cancelling the common factor we get x minus prime in terms of x minus times a constant factor made of beta 0 the relative velocity between the two frames which is a constant. A similar equation giving x plus prime in terms of x plus comes by adding the equations for ct and x. Here the constant factor happened to be just the inverse of the earlier one. Ok, so we now have the Lorentz transformation equations in terms of the light cone coordinates. What's the big deal? The big deal is, unlike the Lorentz transformation equations for ct and x, which mix up these variables, as you can see, the x minus and x plus just get scaled by constant factors into x minus prime and x plus prime respectively. Therefore, the Lorentz transformation equations in terms of these light cone coordinates are way cleaner and simpler to use purely from the calculational standpoint. More importantly, this changes how we visualize the Lorentz transformation. In a previous video, we have shown that the Lorentz transformation matrix transforming the standard Cartesian coordinates of spacetime is made of hyperbolic functions and the Lorentz transformation itself can be visualized as rotation of the ct and x axis with hyperbolic angle theta determined by the relative speed beta 0 between the two Lorentz frames. But the visualization of Lorentz transformation is totally different in terms of the light cone coordinates. Using the same parameterization with the hyperbolic angle theta we have used to write beta 0 as tan hyperbolic of theta, the constant factor with x minus that is 1 plus beta 0 upon 1 minus beta 0 under the square root becomes exponential of theta, a constant greater than unity. So the x minus variable gets stretched by the factor exponential theta due to Lorentz transformation. Correspondingly, the x plus variable gets compressed by the inverse factor exponential of minus theta. So instead of rotation of the spacetime coordinate axis, the light cone coordinate axis just gets stretched and compressed due to Lorentz transformation. The combined effect of this stretching and compressing is to keep the product x minus x plus invariant which is nothing but what we already know as the finite spacetime interval. Ok, now that we have traded the pair ct and x with the x plus and x minus, we must stop to think what is the equivalent of velocity dx by c dt or v by c or beta in terms of this new pair. To define a velocity, first we must decide which among the two variables x minus and x plus is to be treated as the time coordinate. How do we do that? Perhaps 
we should turn to the most natural property of time which is it increases as a particle undergoes physical motion but as a particle moves around within the light cone both x minus and x plus increase so we can arbitrarily choose either of them to act as a time coordinate though neither of them represent what we physically understand as time in the sense of proper time or coordinate time anyway let's choose x plus to play the role of time then dx minus by dx plus is the velocity this is what we call the light cone velocity its properties are strange to say the least if we use the definition of dx minus and dx plus to express the light cone velocity in terms of the usual velocity beta that is v upon c it is very easy to show that for a photon moving in the positive x direction which means its whirl line is along the x plus axis and the corresponding velocity beta is 1 its light cone velocity is 0 for a particle moving extremely fast at nearly the light speed its light cone velocity takes a very small value close to 0 for a particle moving extremely slowly which means its whirl line is tilted from the ct axis only slightly to the right it is close to 1 and for a completely static particle the whirl line is along the ct axis itself and the light cone velocity is exactly unity if the particle moves slowly in the negative x direction the whirl line tilts to the other side of the ct axis and the light cone velocity grows slightly beyond unity and as it continues to move faster and faster in the negative x direction the light cone velocity approaches infinity it finally reaches infinity when the motion in the negative x direction is at the light speed so you see as the standard velocity along the x direction undergoes its whole range of allowed values from plus c to minus c the light cone velocity varies from zero to infinity it is bizarre i know but it is what it is if you ever take a course on string theory or advanced general relativity you will have to deal with this stuff but for now we will do just fine with our regular space-time coordinates do let me know in the comments what you think of these light cone coordinates and their properties thanks for your time and i shall see you in the next video bye bye